In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of the column space of a matrix. So suppose we have a matrix A, which is M by N. We define the column space of that matrix, which we'll denote as COL of A for short. We define the column space to be the set of all linear combinations of the column vectors of A. So for example, if A has the form where the first column is A1, the second column vector is A2, up to the last column vector, which is AN, well, the set of linear combinations of, of some vectors is just what we call the span of those vectors. And so the column space, be aware, is just the span of the column vectors of a matrix A1, A2, up to AN. So we've seen previously that the matrix equation AX equals B is consistent exactly when B is a linear combination of the column vectors of A. So with the introduction of the column space here, we then see that the matrix equation AX equals B is exactly consistent when B is inside the column space of A. And so if we want to determine whether a matrix equation is consistent or not, it really just comes down to determining when is B inside the span of a set of vectors, which is something we've done before. But we often did it in such a way that if we had a specific vector, like B is the vector one, two, three, then we checked, oh, okay, B was inside the column space. Then we take a different vector, like, okay, this time B is gonna be one, zero, five. And then we checked, oh, it's inconsistent that time. It seems a little bit haphazard to have to check for each individual vector. Is this one in the span? Is this one in the span? Is this one in the span? Or in this case, is this one in the column space? Is this in the column space? Is this in column space? Is there some way of sort of doing this universally? And so in this uh, example, I do want to give you a method of determining what is in the column space and what is not in the column space, which of course generally shows us if vectors are in the span or not. So let's say we take a matrix. Here we have a three by three matrix, one, three, one, two, four, four, three, five, seven. Now be aware that me giving you a matrix is really no different than me giving you a set of vectors. We can really identify the, the things together, right? Because a matrix is just a list of the column vectors. So a set of vectors and a matrix essentially are the same thing, right? At least, at least how we're thinking about them right now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide is the vector B inside the column space of A or not? And by doing this generically, that is, we don't know what B is. B is just B1, B2, B3. We're gonna solve this linear system generically um, and see what happens, right? So to solve the matrix equation, we would have to then, you know, solve the matrix equation AX equals B. We solve the associated system of linear equations, which is represented by this augmented matrix. It's very nice to go from the matrix equation to the augmented matrix because the matrix A is just the coefficient matrix. And then the vector given is just the augmented column. So it's really nice to do it that way. So we want to solve the linear system associated to this augmented matrix where our pivot position will be 1, 1, which is already a 1, which is nice. So I'm going to take the second row and subtract from it 2 times row 1, and we're going to take the third row and subtract from it 3 times row 1. So we're going to get a minus 2, minus 6, minus 2, and then minus 2B1. We can't really simplify that one better because we don't know what B1 is. And then for the next one, we're going to get minus 3, minus 9, minus 3, and then minus 3B1 again. And so simplifying the coefficients, uh, of course, 2 minus 2 is going to cancel out. 4 minus 6 is a negative 2. 4 minus 2 is a 2. And then you're just going to get B2 minus 2B1. Can't do much more about that right now. Uh, next here, we're going to get 3 minus 3. So those cancel out, giving us a 0. We're going to get 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. And then 7 minus 3, which is a positive 4. And then you're going to get B3 minus 3B1. Again, without, without knowing what the Bs are, that's the best we can do. We can't simplify it, but that's kind of the point. We want the Bs to be generic so that we can determine universally which vectors are going to be inside the column space or not. And so now with the first column done, we're going to transition our pos pivot position to the 2-2 two -two spot. Um, I noticed that everyone in the first row is sorry the second row at least from the coefficient side those those are all divisible by two we could divide both sides by a negative two so we're going to take negative one half um r2 but also when you look at the third row um i also notice that the coefficients are both divisible by four so we're going to divide by negative one fourth in that in that matrix thus bringing us down here now it's going to be easy to take negative two and two divided by negative two right negative two divided by negative two is a one 
uh, two divided by negative two, of course, is going to be a negative one. So there's a mistake there. Sorry about that. Uh, so that should be a negative one. But then when we take the B2 minus 2B1, when we divide that by negative two, we have to do that one as well. Don't forget the other side. That then becomes B1 minus one half B2. So we get some fractions involved there. Uh, when we do this to the third row as well, you divide everything by negative four. Uh, the negative four will become a one. The four will become a negative one. And then here we're going to have B3 minus 3B1. When we divide that by negative four, you're going to get one fourth 3B1 minus B3. Uh, notice I switched the signs on the negatives because we times by negative one there. So we did that. And so again, focusing on the pivot position right here of a one, we got to get rid of the one below it. So we're going to take row three and we're just going to subtract from it row two. So you're going to get a minus one, a plus one, and then we're just going to subtract, you know, we take this entry right here, we're just going to subtract the entry that's above it. In which case, then we're going to get a row of zeros, which is fine. But then when you take this entry minus this entry, uh, you'll have to combine like terms for the B's, right? You're going to have a three-fourths B1 minus B1. So that gives us a negative one-fourth B1. In terms of the B2s, you'll have a negative negative one-half B2. So that's a positive one-half B2. And then you're going to just have a negative one-fourth B3. Nothing to combine there. And so we get this entry right here. And this is significant because notice it is next to a row of zeros. The only way that this system of equations can be consistent is that the row of zeros on the left must match up with a zero on the right. And so this tells us that we'll be consistent. This system, this matrix equation is consistent if and only if we have that negative one-fourth B1 plus one-half B2 minus one-fourth B3 is equal to zero. That has to follow in order for this to be a consistent system. Now, if you don't like fractions, right, we can times both sides by, by we'll say, negative four. Negative four. That'll clean up the fractions a little bit. That way you get B1 minus 2B2 uh, plus B3 is equal to zero. And so this one's a little bit more tame to use. But what this tells us is that the only way that our matrix equation can be consistent is if B satisfies this relationship. And so we could pick something like, well, what do we want to do? We could take the vector B. It could be the vector 1, 1, 1. Uh, that would work because notice 1 minus 2 plus 1 is 0. Uh, that's a vector that we could do. Uh, we could also do as another alternative, we could do so like 1, 0, negative 1. Uh, that's another vector that would be inside of the column space of the matrix A. On the other hand, if we did something like, say this time you set B equal to be 2, 1, 1, um, that doesn't work there. You notice you'll get 2 minus 2 plus 1, which is not 0. This is not inside the column space of A. So by solving the system of equations generically and thus finding this equation right here, we then could describe the, we could describe the column space using, using this equation. And in some respect, we think of this as an equation with three variables where these two variables you could then make as free variables. And then this B1 depends on that choice. You know, that, that's a way of considering this, right? But this is a way of determining whether we have a vector inside the column space, whether we have a vector inside this span uh, or not.